the inner meaning, the spirit of the myth comes with a deeper understanding of the essence of each planet, not just the physical planet, but the conscious core, because we know now that the proportions and velocity of a planet gives them their own characteristic frequencies which govern biological and behavioral patterns. These planets reflect the archetypal psychology of man. In ancient times, probably the most important field of research was the study of the heavens. Galactic bodies and their movement through the sky were known to be symbolic of the inner faculties within human consciousness. Within all organisms, outdated science has only explained the physical world measured by our five senses. Only in esoteric religions, mysticism, and quantum fields of science are we to find any attempt at explaining where thoughts and emotions fit into the sense-perceptible world. We also understand now that humanity is a community of cells within the organism of the Earth. The Earth, therefore, is a higher organism that shapes our form and function. This higher organism and all other planetary bodies are governed by consciousness, just as we individual humans are. Therefore, the Newtonian belief that galactic bodies are nothing more than lifeless forms floating in space is tantamount to claiming that we humans are nothing more than a composite of elements in motion. We know that this is untrue because we feel, we think, and furthermore we see the result of our consciousness creating what we call life. Plato wrote, This world is indeed a living being, endowed with a soul and intelligence a single visible living entity containing all other living entities, which by their nature are all related. Furthermore, the cosmos is a single living creature which contains all living creatures within it. And in an article out of the Sufi journal, the author writes, the world is a living spiritual being. This was understood by the ancient philosophers and the alchemists who referred to the spiritual essence of the world as the anima mundi, the soul of the world. In scriptures, we hear of the claim that angels guide the inner soulful actions of people, or that the gods wield influence over man. Most ancient spiritual and scientific teachings held the belief that the hierarchies of the gods, angels, archangels, archai, all the way down to the cherubim and the seraphim, are the hierarchies within the human psyche. In this way, we must understand that when the whole of ancient myths and sacred scriptures speak of spiritual influence from a higher being, they were speaking of archetypal forces that are inherent within us, not an influence from an external source. This is where we begin to see the relevance of astrology as an ancient form of science that resurfaced in the 19th and 20th centuries under the name of psychology. Friedrich Nietzsche even stated, as long as you still experience the stars as something above you, you still lack a viewpoint of knowledge. This is astro-psychology and maps the inner faculties of the psyche. In pre-Christian times, there were schools known today as the mystery schools or the mystery religions. The messages encoded in the scriptures and ancient archaeology came from adepts of spiritual science. The intent was to teach the initiates the deeper meaning of these myths. What became later termed as Lucifer, Satan, or the Devil was representative of the ego which rivals the Lord, the representative of the self. The true self is the epicenter of a person's entire being. It is the total sum of everything that we are. The false ego, on the other hand, is the idea and concept we create about ourselves in the course of our lives, which typically excludes any qualities we don't wish to accept about ourselves. However, Humanity has been endowed with the freedom to choose either to obey the true self or to give in to the temptation of the vanity and materialism of the false ego. This is the most notable trait that separates man from animal. Our freedom of choice. The choice to follow our concepts and ideals or our natural impulses. The choice to sustain nature or to destroy it. This freedom of choice weighs on the fate of the entire organism that we call humanity.